Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of The Review with Heather's Passion Academy. And I am Heather of Heather's Passion Academy. And today we are reviewing. We're going back to Family Empire. We've had a little bit of a break. Hope y'all are doing well after the um, Olympics. I know I had to have a little bit of rest after watching that. And then also the DNC happened. So we're just a one episode behind but we're gonna get caught up um so this episode is episode five and it is entitled showdown at the hoedown and when we last left off um we saw that chris who is jaquita's husband was coming into the office to have a tete a tete with um nicole and jermisha regarding his contract with them now this contract that they were to have was supposed to um just pretty much solidify what his role was as a media manager and all these things and you know pretty much outline the duties that he's supposed to have as well as the pay uh and when we left off he was like hey i'm not signing that contract so now we're going to see what his proposed contract is now, the interesting thing to me is that, you know, when it comes to contracts and families working together, sometimes it can get a little dicey. So we're going to see, y'all. We're going to see if if it ruins their relationship. So anyway, uh, as we get started, the episode, again, we say it picks up where Chris is presenting his own contract to Jamisha and Nicole. So he lets them know that he feels um, like the team, or I guess the media management team should be built around him. He pulls out his own contract uh, that has what he feels to be more of an equitable agreement between he and them. They're trying to read over it and see what he's talking about. And um, they kind of just decide on some things that, you know, they both have to kind of make. Uh, concessions in order to make it work for them Uh, he doesn't really want to take the same pay but he's doing it for the stability of his family I think Jaquita was like look we need a steady paycheck and I ain't got time to fool with you today Um, he'd rather work more independently to build his business is really what he's kind of working for but also they asked in exchange for uh, an exclusive contract with him where he doesn't work with other real estate agents because basically they're like we're building a brand and if you're giving away our brand to everybody else then we won't be set aside from you know everybody else so i understand that he wants to increase the wages but they asked uh since they asked for exclusivity but what they asked for was a uh, first, it was a 90-day review, but then they brought it down to a 60-day review, uh, just kind of based on his performance uh, prior to increasing his pay. They finally did, uh, degree, <laughs> agreed on terms, and now they said, now they back family. So, looks like it's working out. We're going to see, because 60 days, they may decide to fire him. We don't know. We just don't know. In the next scene... Jamisha picks up Cheryl and Charlotte to talk to them about the land. She wants to take them, take the time to kind of talk to them more in depth about what her vision is for the family. Um, Cheryl feels like she is a little bit out of order with her plans. Now, Cheryl is the one in the front. Charlotte is in the back seat. Um, She presents them the idea to build a land and make some income uh, instead of simply selling it. So they they kind of were listening, their ears perked up a little bit, but now they were offended because she said that she feels like they really just looking for a payday. They say it's not a payday, it's their inheritance. And I'm like, y'all know, it's, that's pretty much the same thing. Y'all looking to get paid is basically what she's saying. But so let's think about it. The reason why they are really trying to um, be on board with this stuff being sold, uh, because I think... That land sells for about eight seventy, something somewhere around eight sixty and eight seventy, um, and that's about a hundred and seventy four thousand basically per child. If you uh, 
you know, was to take that and divide it by the five of them. Now they probably net a little bit under 150 because I'm thinking you may have to pay taxes on that or, you know, some type of fees. Um, so yeah, that's their payday. Uh, also, as I always tell y'all, I have a two year old that I always crashes my uh, show. So y'all just work with me. <laughs> Jamisha thinks that they could have more money on the back end by developing the land. Um, and it first it seemed like they were they were you know wanting to listen, but I think because she said y'all just looking for a payday, they they ain't open to it no more because they want their money now. They want it right now. So <laughs> we gonna see about them too, y'all. Now in the next scene, Jamisha and her family go on out to have a, a family day in the park. Now you can tell in this scene that she don't know nothing about sports or picking up a ball at all, child. She and the hubby are over there talking about everything coming up for the business. And um, she really feels like it's time for her to step up as far as being the face of the company, kind of like Nicole. Now, Nicole, she says, is the face of the company and she's the actual broker. So she does all the admin stuff. But maybe it's time for her to create her own, you know, identity. Um, and she was saying, admittedly, it was too much for her at first when she first got started with the business because of juggling work and the little ones. But now she feels like it's her time. So, you know, the hubby is all supportive and everything. She's looking to start a podcast basically about her journey as a business person and as a mom. And she feels like some of the people... Um, that she's around say that they can relate to her um, with their work-life struggles, um, trying to balance career and having family and everything. And it's kind of similar. Now he's like, look, you know, you can do, you do whatever you want to do. And one thing I do like about them is that they are supportive of each other's dreams. And, um, and hopefully we're just going to see that. But one thing she needs to stop doing is try to pretend like she be doing sports and stuff. Because she, we know we know she ain't doing no sports with them cheering. That's probably first time picking up a ball. Anyway. In the next scene, Nicole and Larry are talking about the upcoming Braden Family and Friends Day. The little rodeo since it's rodeo season. Um... And while they're talking, she's reminding him that the people from the uh, adoption agency uh, and the attorney are coming for a conversation. Now, Larry's like, well, when, what? I don't remember that. And she says she told him. But I, I got a feeling that he didn't. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's not in their calendar. I don't know. <laughs> They, it seems like their schedules conflict a lot, so they maybe leave some things out sometimes. So I don't know. We'll see. Um, so I'm glad we actually do get to see some of the process when it comes to adoption and stuff, especially when you're talking about um, like black people and everything, because I don't think that, uh, you know, of course, the public just doesn't know anything about starting the process and everything. Most of the time we see the end, like when people actually get the child or the baby or whatever. And then also seeing uh, black people who specialize in adoption of black children makes me feel good because, you know, I wonder how many of our kids get left behind or, you know, end up being um, in a transracial uh, adoption. And I, you know, Typically, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, we would like to see more, you know, black and brown children placed with, you know, families that would be more culturally aware. That's just my little blurb here. But moving on. So they had a lot of questions for the ladies, including um, how open and closed adoptions work, um, how old the child would be that they are interested in, which is something also, you know, they're looking more so for a a young child instead of a baby. Um, and they want somebody uh, closer to the age of their own child so that uh, they can have, you know, so that their daughter can have a close sibling she can grow up with because, you know, she was really talking about growing up with a sibling is something important to her. 
And she just wish, wishes she can do that for her. So, and then they, they just don't have the lifestyle to give, uh, you know, to slow down enough to have a newborn. So that's pretty much what they're looking for is someone already, you know, past the baby stage. Now I can understand that. Um, and I know a lot of folks like newborns or younger children, you know, because they can kind of shape and mold them the way they want. But there's a little bit more of a challenge when you have a child that's, you know, already have memories and things. Uh, also, the lawyer let them know that there is no going back, you know, once you uh, have this child. So even if y'all divorce, you still on the hook for this baby. And that child is going to be your responsibility, just like a, a natural child. So if you split up, you're going to be paying child support. Just know that. So after their conversation with the ladies, they do realize there's more they need to discuss as well as making sure everyone is OK uh, with, you know, the process, including a seven year old, because, you know, they need to make sure that she's OK with that as far as pulling the trigger on the process and that she understands what's going on. Now, Larry wants to um, have a closed adoption Um and he said he just would feel more comfortable until the child is older and expresses the desire to meet their family. And Nicole says she's OK with that, uh, but she wouldn't want to cut the child off, you know, completely from the family. But, you know, she gets why he wants to do that. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing what's the next step in their process, because I truly am interested in that. Um, I mean, at this point, at, at my age, I don't want to do any of that. But uh, that was something I used to be interested in back in when I was a little younger. So, yay. Uh, in the next scene, uh, Nicole and Lakeisha meet with a therapist to start working on their relationship. And they have a lot of things they need to discuss. Um, and I'm sure a lot of the parts of their issues or whatever the grownups and their family were saying around them. Nicole says she was born in January and Keisha was born in May. So you already see there's some overlap right there in those relationships. Now, Nicole says Keisha is an outside child. And Keisha said, well, no, I'm not an outside child. I'm simply another child. Um, and I think a lot of how they came into being has a lot to do with what's going on with those that family. Um, and that's why a lot of issues uh, are coming up because of the framing of, you know, whether or not Lakeisha was, you know, an outside child or not. Uh, it's not clear to me if the problem was the daddy or he was supposed to be exclusive to one or the other because uh, they were not married is, is what I'm gathering or what she, what Keisha actually said. And then, you know, or we don't know what happened. He just out there dipping and doing and just having children with folks. I, I don't know. But it sounds to me also like um, the story that Nicole got was to just kind of clean things up. Like, oh, well, we were engaged or whatever. And that simply wasn't the case. Um, so we're going to find out some more. Now, Keisha says she'd been raised by her brother's dad, and all that time she thought that he was her dad until she found out, you know, about the bio dad situation and everything. Now, she also says that she feels left out a lot of times, and then one of the things they talked about was, like, the trip they took one time. It was kind of like a cousin's trip, I guess, and it seems like everybody had their rooming situation together except her. And at the end of the day, both of them are tiptoeing around feelings. And um, Keisha said Nicole's mom hadn't been mean to her or anything, but she does feel like there may be some things that are said when she's not around. And that could be true because, you know, uh, Nicole's mom did go on to marry uh, their dad. So we don't know what's been said around her or around anybody else regarding uh, Keisha and this situation. But, you know, most of the time tensions start when other people are involved. But that's right. That's a little cousin picture. I think that's cute. That's what they were talking about. They went on this trip and she felt she's like nobody called her to uh, be her roommate. So we know that there's a lot happening there. And when it comes to families and everything, 
there's oftentimes, especially if there's a child that is not necessarily considered a uh, part of the group, a lot of times they may get excluded, just depending on how the family acts, but we don't know. Anyway, in the next scene, is rodeo time, child. Nicole done pulled out the mink. <laughs> you know, she be doing super extra stuff. Uh, Chris out there working. Everybody having a good time. You know, uh, they taking family photos. You know, everybody's eating good. You know, laid back, having a great time. And then uh, Nicole let Jamisha and all of them know that she and Keisha have started therapy and, um, and it was very eye opening for her. And it's going to take a little bit more time for them to fully open up, but she feels like they're on the right track. Chris says he has a good feeling about working on this new contract. So things are looking up very nice. Um, and then you got, you know, even Nikki came to kind of make sure things are all smoothed over with Keisha you know, again, this is just a good time for everybody to get together. They hanging out. They doing little. I don't even know what that is. I guess that's a marshmallow. Yeah, I don't eat none of this stuff. So <laughs> you got family photos being taken. Hold on, baby. One thing about it is they were trying to make sure Keisha got in the picture. So that she's not excluded from the family photos. Uh, but then while they're out there talking, uh, Nicole goes to put, well, while they're out there taking pictures and everything, Nicole goes to put her uh, coat away and sees Charlotte inside and goes and decides to have a chat with her. And then their conversation moves toward Nicole asking how things went to her outing with Jamisha the other day. And while she got her, Nicole pitches another idea, which is to subdivide the land, sell some of the houses for immediate payout, and then rent the remainder of the houses for residual income. Charlotte's like, oh, okay, I, I might be open to that. They decide to pull Oscarine in and have a conversation with her to see how she feels about uh, that. And Oscarine thinks that might be a good idea. So they decide to have a good It'll be a good idea to have Jamisha, my two-year-old trying to talk in the mic, y'all. It's a, I, I hope it's okay. <laughs> they decide to have uh, Jamisha be the project manager. Um, that's what the the um, proposal is. Now, outside, we see that uh, Jamisha, Jaquita, and Nikki notice that Nicole is in there talking to Charlotte and, and uh, Granny. And want to know what's going on. So they head inside. Now with the discussion going on. Uh, they. Uh, trying to figure out. What's going on with the land. And now this is where to me. Things start getting a little weird. Because you got too many people starting to. Walk in. They want to know what's going on. What y'all talking about. Who talking about what. what you know. Um, and the thing that I keep saying about them. Is that in most of these reality shows they always start these conversations in the weirdest of places and they just need to not do that anyway while there's everybody sitting around talking and everything um when they wanted to know what's happening with the other properties like the salon and the um the uh event what do you call the thing the <laughs> reception um, Jaquita opens up and says, Well, they're like, This is the line, you know, they should go to their mama. And they, so now everybody's kind of bickering about what's going where and who's doing what. And granted, didn't like the way that was. Uh, she keeps letting everybody know, Y'all, the grandchildren, I got five kids, I'm gonna take care of them. Now, I don't know, it's it'd be a lot, a lot of times. Um, so. <laughs> the episode ends with uh too much talking and them looking like they are getting upset about what's going on with this conversation so we're gonna see in the next episode how things can be uh elevated or regulated when it comes to this conversation because again it's too many people involved in this conversation and what's gonna end up happening is 
um, we're going to lose the plot because too many people want to know what's going on. And, and I think it's really upsetting Oscar Ring to the point where she really just don't want to deal with it anymore. I get that. She's just tired. She's getting older. She don't want to, she don't want to be listening to all that stuff. Anyway, um, of course the next episode, we're going to find out what all happens, but, um, I'm just glad to be back y'all. Anyway, thank you so much for watching as always. Uh, I appreciate you for tuning in. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments. And I would be absolutely honored if you support my channel by liking, subscribing, and sharing this review. Also hit that notification bell so that you can um, be notified, you know, when we do this again. Uh, but as always, thank you so much. As you know, it, it's been a ride, y'all. I'm, I'm getting back in the saddle and I'm glad about it. But thanks so much for supporting. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.